Hey everybody, welcome to a very special episode of BS for Build. This is actually a documentary style episode set a, uh, a few weeks back when we were finishing the Huracan, uh, preparing it for SEMA. So uh, I've, I've seen your guys' comments and I've listened to your guys' feedback of like, you know, you want to get to know more about the guys and you want to hear a little bit more about maybe their backstory and their input on things and stuff like that. And I thought that's one of the most interesting parts of, of the SEMA crunch time and the SEMA build is the interactions between us and, and the fun that we have and the stuff that gets lost on camera uh, because honestly, people stop talking once the camera turns on right so I hired a very talented filmmaker Chris Greer to um, help us build this documentary he shot all that he filmed with us for almost a week um, and did did the original edits and then we came through together as a team and, and finished the edit so this is a pretty cool thing we've never done it before I'd love to know you guys' feedback if you enjoyed this type of thing we can certainly uh, do it again and this is something I'm really proud of so I hope you guys enjoy Yeah, so we're building, we're building, we have built already, one, one really cool thing is we've already built the world's first manual Huracan. It's a twin turbo LS swapped Huracan with a carbon fiber body, um, rear wheel drive, manual transmission, all the good stuff. And the, the turbo is sticking out the rear hatch, which is something I always wanted to do. It's been a trip. I mean, we've done a lot of different things. I I had known he'd been doing this since b before I moved up here, but I never actually planned on working with him, even when I moved into this house. So just being able to go in, kind of hang out and help out with the GTR and just see it take off continually from there and being able to play a bigger role, it's gonna, it's gonna be really exciting. is for builds I had no experience in bodywork I had seen kind of minor dents and things fixed with filler but I had never really got my hands in especially with some of this, the amount of stuff we'd have to fill in now and sand off and just seeing the process of doing it over and over and over again until you get that clean finish is kind of giving me an appreciation I didn't quite have before Goodbye. <laughs> Since it's such a baller car, right, we buy iPhone mounts, like whatever. Uh -huh. We make it so we can like modify them so we can bolt them into the door, and then it mounts the iPhone, and then you just clip it in, and we'll literally have that on at SEMA, <laughs> and then it's just front-facing camera. <laughs> it's like it's the right size. Like, don't be a bitch about it. <laughs> just buy like the iPhone 6 Max. Yeah, and yeah, just and like we'll just flash images on it and say like hashtag street parked and all this other <laughs> shit. Alright, there's a backup plan. Backup, backup plan. We're making a statement. <laughs> Oh my God. We're coming into the night of day four and I, I got a little bit blindsided by two things. One is the fact that starting today and every day leading up, every day until we unveil the car at SEMA, I have to edit a video and put out a video. If I don't do that, 
then we won't be able to have the audience, the YouTube community updated um, with the build and show all the progress leading up to SEMA. And that's one thing that I absolutely will not let slip is I don't think that people at SEMA should see the build uh, before the people on YouTube because the people on YouTube supported us to be able to make the build. We wouldn't be here if it wasn't for them. I'm spending so many hours um, editing in the morning and that kind of, that definitely blindsided me. There's a lot of stuff to do. <laughs> a lot. that we're still gonna get everything done, but um, we, we had to have some serious talks about the whole air to water intercooler setup, the amount of time that it's gonna take to, to get this and the fact that we can't dyno without it. We called Texas Speed and we found out that we could, if we just drove the car really hard, we don't have to go to the dyno, which gives us an entire day. So I wanna to go to the dyno, I wanna to go to SEMA and be able to tell people real numbers with a real dyno graph, not what everybody else does and be all theoretical, but I also want to make sure that we get done. So we're trying to ride that balance, but we just kind of let it slip that plumbing this thing would basically take an entire day. So that is where we're at. I choose the people that I work with uh, based more on more on friendship and personality uh, than skill set. I've been very, very lucky that the guys that I work with are also very talented, but um, Kyle and I are friends from high school. We've been friends for years and years and years, but he's a very quick learner and he's very diligent. Um, he was in the military for a long time, so he's got that military mindset. He's able to you know, listen and absorb very, very well. And Oscar's obviously a phenom and he's been doing this for like a million years. So, um, but anyways, I, I kind of look for friends first and they say, <laughs> they say don't work with your friends, but I love it. It's, it's worked out really, really well so far. So yeah, a friends first and then just have fun in the shop and don't take anything too seriously. We should have saw our wheels too. All the kids done. Getting a lot of work done. Um, getting to see a lot of the fruits of our labor right now. Getting those body parts in, seeing them wrapped. I spent a lot of work on those wide body and to see those kind of finished and getting to see them up on the, actually onto the car soon is gonna be really, really rewarding. There's easily 100, maybe 200 hours put into this wide body kit since we uh, last filmed it. And uh, it's it turned out really amazing. So with no more further ado, no more further ado, no. Hell yeah. I mean, as long as we don't f*** up between now and tomorrow. <laughs> uh, just in so good. It makes a 14 inch tire look like small. <laughs> Isn't that insane? I don't know. It looks really good. Who else forgot about exhaust mounts? I did. Yeah. We could hide them like up here or something and That's then right. just make the rod, rod come off so it sets in there. I was thinking of hanging them off the, uh, this, this piece, the X piece. The X piece? Yeah. Do we even know if these hit the X piece? <laughs> no, no they don't. Yeah, they don't. Um, I, I, I don't know, I kind of think we should do it off of here because it comes in right here. 
Did you double? Oh yeah, because it comes right here. I don't know. We can figure it out. If you put it like back here, it'd be easy to hide and just go up. And go. We'll talk about it tomorrow. When did you get started with Vias for Build? Uh, I got started, I'd say about a year and a half ago. Um, it was about halfway through the 240 build. Uh, I came in uh, with one of my coworkers. Uh, he invited me over and said, hey, could use a hand real quick. <laughs> and I uh, ended up staying for a while and been here ever since. What's your what's your day job again? I am an iron worker, so I do uh, welding, fabricating, and uh, lots of structural welding. BS for Bill, once it got started, it kind of caught fire. It just took over my entire life. Producing two episodes a week at minimum was what I just, I started right off to. I had one popular episode and I decided I'm gonna do this and see where it goes. I was on a vacation from work. I had like 30 days. I made about 15 episodes of content not knowing what I was doing, but I was just trying and working really, really hard. I didn't know where I was gonna go. <clears throat> And then the problem was is that my whole life was gone. My time was gone. My girlfriend, you know, Chelsea, um, it, was a, it was a weird time for us because it's just like, where did this come from? What happened? And our life totally changed and why, you know? And it's like, well, because people are watching. What is, well, well, what does that mean? Why? Who cares if people are watching? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I don't know. I just, I've always wanted to do this stuff. And if people are going to watch, I want to do it. And I want to show them. It's a monumental thing. Something was easy. I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna retire on that note. I'll see you guys at SEMA. I'm gonna go without a car. I'm gonna take the bus. So I'm trying to wire up this uh, relay block. So this is gonna tell everything when to turn on, essentially. So there's gonna be a main power switch, pumps, and the fans. 
trying to wrap my head around that, then wire it up. Have you ever expected to to work on a, a car like this or a project like this? No, mm, not really. Been joking with my roommate about Lambos, how it's kind of this dream car, and then here, here I am helping him build one. So Zane is a really close friend of mine and Kyle's. Um, Kyle and Zane were really, really close in high school. I was a little bit older than them, but anyways, we've been friends ever since high school. Uh, he's really good with um, uh, programming and Raspberry Pi. And he knows, uh, you know, he knows the basics of electrical and all that good stuff. Uh, he normally works on like much smaller scale, like circuit boards and stuff like that. But I knew he'd be great for this project. And it's like what we talked about yesterday. It's, it's friends first over expertise. He's fun to have around in the shop. It's great to get to see my friend and hang out with my friend, you know, so it all feels like a nice hangout. So I just uh, asked him to take some time off work, told him I'd pay him a little bit more than his day job, and, and we got him out here for a couple days. Bummer that we only have him for two days and we can't have him for like three or four if we need him, but, uh, but hey, I'd rather have him here than not have him here, so yeah. So, I was sitting there and I'm like, this is gonna be a really hard piece to make if we don't make it the whole hatch gonna look like shit. And then Oscar's like, can we go cut something off the BMW or something like that? Bad idea, right? But it made me think, what about the old hatch that we didn't decide to use? And then I go look out there and there's like this perfect piece <laughs> kind of built into it. It's made out of fiberglass too. So I'll cut it, I'll cut the rest of the stuff we don't need off of it, patch the fiberglass, sand it over, cover it in carbon fiber and we're good to go. Easy beat. All because Oscar wanted to cut it off my M5. <laughs> Be right back. I'm gonna go grab another five thousand dollar hatch. Look at it. Look at how perfect that piece is. I present to you our new trim piece. That does mean I'm killing a five thousand dollar hatch to save time. It's already killed. Money, money, money. This is going to be my favorite thing to do body work on because it means we're actually saving time, not just doing body work. I dipped it. <laughs> so, uh, with the aluminum, it's you have to get your uh, tungsten really close to it. Otherwise, you don't direct your electric uh, your electricity where you want it to. Your it doesn't melt it where you want it to. So you got to kind of like adjust as you're going. So you get it really close, and then all of a sudden you just dip it <laughs> if you're not steady enough. Yeah. Let's see if I can find a brush here somewhere. You can see how it turns all black when you get it when you dip it. It went from really nice to black. Things are going a lot faster now. Things are really getting knocked off the list. Um, Oscar and I sat down and had a small panic attack about how much aero stuff has to be built, um, how, how crazy it all is. Um, and we had to modify the designs, simplify some stuff. Again, it's like, it's the SEMA rush. We would do, we could do it differently, but we don't have the time. So we modified the designs to kind of slim it out a little bit. So we still will get the same look, but um, it won't take as much time to make. So uh, yeah, made some compromises there. And then now that we got, we're like rocking and rolling. The only unfortunate part is we're, we really, I think, got into our stride about six o'clock, maybe five o'clock today, 5 p.m. And it's nine right now. So we got, a, you know, a couple more hours till everybody will kind of start getting sleepy. Probably work till about one tonight and then, uh, and then hit it hard tomorrow. Tomorrow, like two days left and then probably maybe work overnight <clears throat> or work overnight the next night. But I'm, I'm feeling good. Things are, things are actually working out really well. Oh man, all right, what was I working on? Oh, that stupid piece of fiber. So we have a problem. We like don't have places to sand anymore, right? Because we're trying not to create dust in the paint booth because we need to paint in there. And then in here, everybody dies from fiberglass poisoning. So I'll be outside. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I got a stand right here. <laughs>
so let's look for that. Yeah, yeah, let's look for that. So I'm gonna hold up the center of it. Then I think we should. Uh, I think we should probably just use this table since it's already garbage. A nice another coat of uh, paint won't hurt. Mm -hmm. Then we'll look up the gel gun. Shit, I'm gonna run an airline. From that one. Remember how we were running the last airline, time but now we got. Now it's very cold outside and that air is going to be garbage. We don't have, we don't have, uh... damn man. We don't have, we basically don't have a way to spray gel coat. pumps over here wired in. We go all the way to the front and you can barely see the lines which is good. So this is a little different than what I'm used to but like microcontrollers that are like that big so it's, it's more like super small things, low voltage. But, um, similar concepts. Oh man, I'm having a great time. I, was, I actually just texted Chelsea earlier today. Like, it's so much fun to be able to be here and like working with all my friends on such a cool project and just having a fun time, you know? It's as long as like when the stress gets out of your mind and you sit back and you realize like, I'm in a shop with all my friends and we're having a great time and we're, like it's like forced spending time together, but it's it's really enjoyable. I've been with these guys 16 hours a day now for five days in a row, and it's still like super fun. We're all just joking around, having a great time. So I'm having I'm having a blast. That's one thing that I will say that at the end of this build, no matter how it turns out, we had a lot a lot of fun working on this, and I'm still having a ton of fun working on it. supports off or not either. So right now I'm thinking what cars have steering wheels that we can steal or where can we buy good quality you know steering wheels in time or do we have sponsors that we can call that could bring one to SEMA. So how do you like working with Chris? Uh, it's fun. He uh, he's a very smart person. He he sees um, he sees the end product uh, a lot more than normal people I've talked to. They 
they feel uh, like they understand what it's going to look like, but I, I really feel like he can see what it's going to look like before it's actually finished, and uh, he's, he's got a gift. <laughs> I think I chose to build this car. Well, I've, I've always been really fascinated with supercar culture, and I don't like it really, to be honest with you. I don't like the whole uppity person that drives to the car show has a completely stock car, but thinks that they deserve attention and things like that. Um, also, they're like radically unreliable and expensive to maintain. So I just, it was a pretty easy picture for me to connect to take the most you know reliable, easy to manage, what, most popular engine um, maybe in the entire world, and then throw it in one of the most rare cars and then have like a super reliable, you know, <laughs> supercar. We are trying an unconventional method of applying gel coat because we don't have an air compressor that we can use right now. So we're gonna try and brush on gel coat and uh, pull off a miracle filling in a lot of low spots on our carbon fiber piece. If we get it right, it'll be the first raw carbon fiber piece that we built for the car. If we get it wrong, we'll sand it up smooth tomorrow and it'll get wrapped black and be another sad situation. Alright. It's been a learning experience, but I'm really I'm become very proud of some of the, the products that were coming out. The doors I'm really happy with. I was really worried about some of the certain angles on them, having to actually build them because the actual mold didn't uh, set it as well as I wanted it to, but um, I'm, I've been proud, trying, to, trying my hardest. Spray window, it's really fantastic. So, what we're gonna do is this little wipe down is gonna take a lot of the dust nibs out, and this is definitely still within the respray window. Now, we just have to hope our can of clear is good. If not, we'll run to the store by Ella. Uh, spray it up. Everyone's going to be looking at it to see how, what we did and what we didn't do right. That's like everyone's main goal. People don't really normally get super close to the cars at SEMA because yeah. it's kind of like a don't touch them type of situation, you know? So I would say my stress level is like at about a, a, a 5 out of 10. <laughs> and tomorrow we'll see if it gets up to like an 8 or a 9. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we can keep it going. Give the blood flow again. That's right, we did decide that we are going to go to sleep tonight. Just not for very long, but that's in anticipation of going a whole other day. We are not going to be going to the dining room tomorrow. I don't know if we'll cut this into two different episodes or one or what, but we'll see. Let's just keep working.
else wants to draw dinosaurs. Let's see. Further progression. job in cars I've mainly I've mainly just worked on on friends cars I've worked on uh, just acquaintances and uh, anyone that really needed a hand I've always enjoyed it it's always been a hobby uh, the schedule is extremely tight <laughs> we've been working I'd say 16 hour days for the last two weeks or so and uh, we're gonna we're gonna squeak on by <laughs> so I mean this whole thing is pretty sketchy without that plate mm -hmm. Separately, it'll obviously be a lot more relaxing for you because you have no real, just like get there sometime Sunday. Like, yeah. Not really a big deal. That doesn't seem too bad. Just being able to go that way, I'll, I'll think about it. And yeah, I'll just talk think about, about it, it in the morning. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But yeah, get some sleep, man. Um, yeah, set an alarm for like nine, be back out by nine thirty, something like that. Perfect. All right, man. Don't sleep too hard, or we'll finish the whole thing without you. Don't do that to me. What a bummer that would be. <laughs> We've only been working on this for five months. You don't want to miss the last I'll hour. I'll wake up and I'll already be up on the trailer. <laughs> what? I'll be on the trailer doing a burnout. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry we missed you, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Safety glasses. I'm not going to fucking hurt myself in the last minute. This no is, body. I mean, this is definitely, that actually looks pretty fucking good for Oh 
shit. Wow. It's really weird because that like that really doesn't even enter my mind like my mind i think about it, like what happens like if the car falls off the trailer like if we get in a car wreck or, or anything like that on the way uh if we accidentally like burn the car down i don't see a uh, weird answer to the question but i don't really see uh, a situation where we don't finish we have a car that looks the part even if you said hey chris you got six hours left you need to make this thing roll into SEMA." we would just run zip 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 and we'd have a a, a phantom car it wouldn't really work like we needed it to but it would it would show up and it would do the thing um so yeah we, we will I, don't, I don't i just don't think it's really possible that we don't finish it's just going to be those goals that i want to do are going to just they, they could possibly just slip away and it could be another year where the first time we run the car is in a parking lot in Las Vegas. Like the second we get there, we unload the car and we, that's when, we, I mean, we've already actually ran it. So we're ahead of schedule from last year. Um.
It was so early when I cut this. I put on the. Uh, oh, that's what that I was. I put on the safety glasses, and they had like overspray in them, so okay. everything was all foggy. But I couldn't tell, so I kept just blinking and blinking and cutting it, and I was getting dizzy, and I was like, oh. Yeah, that sounds about right. Me. Just one? Yeah. Oh, hang on. I'll get you another one, Kevin. There you go. Yo, yo, yo. Go on, get! Uh, is there anything else you, you want to say about your experience on, on this project? Or... Um, I would say I'm just really excited for everyone to see it. You see what we've done in the videos, but we put a lot of hours into this. And it's just, it's been, it's been a lot of fun, it's been very stressful, but I think we're really coming out with something we're all going to be very happy with. Did you ever expect to be working on a car like this? I did not, no. No. I've always wanted to, I've always, you know, thought about like, oh, what would I be doing? And, but nothing in this depth. Not a full rebuild, reconstruction of a Lamborghini, complete custom. It's crazy. Concerned about the next 48 hours, you know? Step one is done, now we have to drive 17 hours in 24 hours after working 48 hours with no sleep. So, doesn't uh, doesn't leave a lot of time. And we're not out the door, so that means that time is ticking down now too, so. Yeah, I'm really jealous of all the other people that get to just throw their car on a truck and wave it goodbye. Yeah, I'm really happy with how the car's turning out. I'm a little bit worried about the front splitter. We're working on that right now. Um, I think on, on the positive side, we had a, a turn on the rear hatch where it didn't work out how we wanted it to, but then we actually spun that into a positive and I'm really happy with the, pro the proposed design and the changes and the outcome so far. Um, I'm a little bit worried about our front splitter because it, it's, it's getting almost too like home built looking where you never really want that look on a, on a car, especially not like this. So, um, but I'm really hoping with the wrap and the game plan that we have, like sometimes you gotta have faith in the rendering, faith in what you're designing, and like it's already been designed, it's already been designed in 3D space, so we just gotta make it. And normally you make it, and then once you get it on the car, you're like, wow, that was the right decision. So hopefully that's how we feel when we get there. I just think, I'm feeling a little bit better from being sick for a couple days, and I just, uh, I think we're just having a lot of fun. I think that that's what's like really important, if we're just, we're really all having a lot of fun, and I really hope that us being tired doesn't lead to anybody getting hurt. That's something that I'm pretty worried about. It seems to happen every year. I sliced my finger open today, that was minor. This is blood. Um, but uh, I hope that every, I, I just hope that, you know, I, I don't care if the car, you know, how done the car gets, it's plenty done right now. I just hope that we get to Friday or Saturday or whatever day we call it quits and everybody's got like, everybody feels good and, and we have fun and then that's it. So. That's my feeling right now. That's my that's my biggest concern. And I'm excited. I'm so excited. Next week is going to be awesome. We fired her up and she fired right back. Looks like we got a weird oil leak. We didn't really expect. 
At first we thought it was our header wrap, you know, just taking a second, but. That's a ton of oil. Thank you guys so much for watching that whole video and watching to the end. Just the support of you guys watching is such an amazing thing that helps the channel out so much. So I want to give you guys a big shout out. And obviously, uh, I want to take another opportunity just to thank the guys, uh, Kyle and Oscar and Chris. That was an insane um, rush to the end that we had never planned on it getting that out of control. But they were like champions dealing with all of it. And even after SEMA, there were problems and they helped me through that too. So big thanks to them. Uh, I'm forever grateful. And lastly, I want to give a shout out to the SEMA Young Guns campaign. While I was there at SEMA, I got the opportunity to work with a lot of the younger builders and actually judge a lot of the builds um, that, that were in the Young Guns category of the Battle of the Builders. So Battle of the Builders is the big build off for all of SEMA. The Young Guns is their own subsection for people under 27. It was a great time uh, hearing all of your stories, chatting about the similar, stu similar things that we'd all been through uh, to get to SEMA. And, and just seeing all the cool and unique builds and all the hard work put into them was really cool. And if any of you guys are out there and you're 27 or under and you're interested in joining the Battle of the Builders, there's gonna be a link in the description below. Uh, check it out. They already have all the regional shows all mapped out where they're gonna be so you can find one all across the US. You'll be able to find one. And it's a really, really cool program. Um, and, and it's really cool to push these young builders uh, as far as they can go to show off their, their good work. So um, check it out, guys. If you're interested, it's something that's definitely pretty special. All right, guys, so I'm I'm running errands right now, trying to get stuff situated back home from SEMA and all that good stuff. We need to get the BurntCon uh, back into the shop and do some uh, final stuff so we can get on the test and tuning. And you guys will be happy to hear that I'm also working with Rob Dom to see if we can do some sort of a shootout between my BurntCon and his four rotor as soon as we both have them like mechanically sound. So uh, I hope you guys stay tuned for that. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you don't miss any of those episodes and I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Come, come, come on.